Aha! It's working now. <laughs> Hello, friends from a different room in my house. Um, I am going to take a moment and let a few people know that this is working now because not surprising mercury is in retrograde and it's nine o'clock at night pacific time so you know so it goes but in just a few moments i will be sharing some opinions and insight on lucy delic's visionary path tarot and merging it with uh, my personal practice, uh, uh, something I came up with um, to celebrate my 13 years in Portland, Oregon, because 13s are a very special number for me. I started doing 13 for 13, which is 13 single card pulls for the first 13 people who commented on a group tarot Facebook page. And that went well, and then, you know, as things do, they they peter off an interest and I shifted and I did it on LinkedIn for a little while. And, and that was also a little like quiet and timid. And when I started writing tarot from Conscience or the Traveling Moth for The Edge magazine, and they started uh, gifting me decks, the deck that I will be reviewing um, was gifted to me, I did not pay for it uh, from the Edge magazine. Um, however, everything that I share and my opinions therein will be my true and heartfelt opinions. Um, and I lost my train of thought because I am trying to multitask in ways that I do not normally do when I am. Um, um, when I'm reading and I will very much look forward to shifting into like full tarot mode as opposed to, um, as opposed to this mode. Um, so hopefully Let's see. It's always interesting navigating technology because it is not my strongest suit. I do prefer. I do prefer to um, let other people do my tech for me in a lot of ways. I like to do the art and the channeling and the listening. Um, and I like other people to do the tech. Um, <sighs> all right. So, as I do for any group of people that are joining me for new moon group tarot sessions or other group tarot sessions, I am going to invite you, dear viewers, to breathe with me in what I was taught is a moon cycle breath and have come to learn that it has many different names in many different traditions and it is an inhale for the count of four a holding full or suspended for a count of four an exhale for a count of four and a holding empty for a count of four so if this feels good for you and your body, wherever you are right now, let all your air out. 
Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Empty. Hold. Exhale. Empty. Let that go. Notice what's different. Notice what's the same. I am streaming this live from Portland, Oregon, traditional lands of the Multnomah, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Warm Springs, and many other indigenous tribes who did and still do make their homes throughout the Columbia River Basin. And if you want to learn more about this particular part of Turtle Island, I highly recommend checking out Wisdom of the Elders Vimeo channel or following Fires Igniting the Spirit on Instagram. I am not going to review this deck in a sort of one-on-one -on -one showing each of the cards, although how delightful that the first card that I flipped over just happened to be the Fool, because I have used this deck for a bit since um, it was gifted to me by The Edge magazine, and, um, and yet here we are at the beginning. That is delightfully appropriate. Um, so rather than give you a, you know, one by one card hold up sort of thing, which you can find on, um, on YouTube already, I am going to share, I'm going to pull 13 cards at random. Hello, Dana, and hello, David. Thank you both for joining. Dana, this is the deck that you adore so much. Um, I'm so thrilled that you both are here. So what I am going to do instead is choose 13 cards at random. And for those of you watching whenever, you are watching, I invite you to pick a number between one and 13. And then when I get to that card, whatever the wisdom of that card is, is hopefully the wisdom that will resonate with you. Um, if you do watch some of the other YouTube tutorials um, and reviews of Lucy Delic's Visionary Tarot. Uh, some of the critique that you'll hear is that the cards are uh, very sticky and and large and a little hard to shuffle. And I definitely have. Um, they're not the they're not the easiest for my hands to hold either. However, I have noticed that um, after shuffling and shuffling them that they they are they are softening up um and the box is definitely a lot less sticky uh who knows what will happen as uh, as i continue to use them in my practice and such 
Um, for those of you watching who may be visually impaired in any way, I am a 40 something Caucasian woman with very long strawberry blonde hair and brown eyes. I am currently wearing a uh, blue glass necklace with um, blue glass heart beads and little silver beads in between. Uh, a black v-neck top and a very comfy blue sweater. <sighs> and um, hopefully the closed captioning will work very well for anyone uh, for anyone here who is deaf or hard of hearing and I will do my best to enunciate well if you are reading my lips. So if you have yet to choose your number between one and 13, please do that now. And for those of you who are here watching live, thank you for joining Dana and David, at least who I see who are, post who are posting there um, in the chat, which is, is lovely to see y'all doing that. Um, where am I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna need a little more space. <laughs> the table that I am working on in the size of these cards is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve, thirteen. All right. So I have chosen thirteen cards at random. And uh, this is predominantly a black and white deck. And um, the backs of the cards are purple with a hand palm out in black and white lines with a star radiating from the right index finger of the hand. And for all of the number ones out there, I give you the nine of swords. You are given, we are given the nine of swords. And so this card asks the question of what is keeping you up at night? What thoughts, what mental hamsters are spinning on those wheels? Where do you feel your energy pointed to? This illustration, rather than have a um, Rider Waite Smith tradition of you know having having a person like up in bed with head in their hands, this has nine swords and all sorts of different directions and uh, a sort of pyramid space up top that's radiating out and one, two, three, four, five of the swords are directly coming out of this mushroom at the bottom of the card. And so in some ways there's almost uh, for any of you who are listening and watching for whom psychedelics are a part of your practice in medicine, one of the things that is coming up is be careful your mind space when, when and if you choose to do or use any of those medicines because they have a they have the potential to have a very drastic effect 
on your trip. Like make sure you are in a good place with good people, with clear intentions and um and that is the that world and those choices are not ones that I have a lot of personal experience or knowledge in. So um and yet that is that's what's coming from these sorts coming out of that mushroom right now. How you think about situations, how you reframe problems or sticky situations is helpful. And nines have doors around them and all, excuse me, nines have walls around them and all walls have doors. Welcome, Blue. So glad that you could join. And so for the number ones, if there are people or ideas or patterns in your life that you are finding do not serve you, you may open the door and let them out. Number twos. For the number twos, the king of wands, the king of fire. Mm. I'm not sure what animal Lucy has intended this to be in the center. It's almost like a dog or a chihuahua. It's almost like a jackal. And then there is this snake coming from behind the head of the king. And so this is a card of sitting into your fire, of radiating your power and your core and your energy and having your spirit and your actions be in alignment and to work with the animals in your life. Those, um, the animal energies that are a part of you and around you. The wand that is in the center of the king's crown is feeling quite prominent. Align your actions and align your spirit is what is feeling from this card right now. <laughs> Dana, yeah, it does kind of look like it's giving the finger, which is absolutely also part of, um, hello, Eleanor, yes. Mercury retrograde had to flip the, U <laughs> had to shift what YouTube channel I was working on today because that's just sometimes how it happens. Um, Dana, getting back to your comment about it looks like the king's crown is flipping the thing is flipping the bird. Yeah, absolutely. That is, and that is one hundred percent part of being situated in your power. That much is being able to say, "Fuck you," to the people, places, and ways that are that deserve it in that moment. However, like it is also important to temper that with self-awareness to make sure that the impulse to flip someone off is not just coming from your personal frustrations and personal angers and hot headedness, but from um, that there's that there's more that there's more to it there. So uh, for those of you who are just joining, I have chosen 13 cards at random and 
you can think of a number between three and 13 and whatever the messages of that card are, are for you. And maybe some of the other messages here are as well. For my threes, the star. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I adore how the star in the center of this is the six pointed star. And the energy of the star is all about radiating yourself, being, being your true authentic self and just letting that shine out there in the world. And in uh, ceremonial magic practices, there is a visualization of placing the six rayed star in your body. And the first thing that came up for me when seeing this six rayed star so prominently in the center was to then also see the six rayed star within myself, with uh, one triangle being made from the crown of the head, the right and left hip bones and up again, and the second triangle being made from between the feet to the right and left shoulders and down again. There's also something interesting in these curved shapes here hugging the side of the Star of David. And I don't really know, I don't really know what they are. It kind of looks like the face of some sort of animal or person, because I'm definitely seeing an eye there. I'm not sure what, um, I'm not sure what the creator of the deck intended in that. Shine your light. Radiate your truth. And when you do that, it has ripple effects. For the fours. For the fours, nine of pentacles. So this is the card that I nicknamed the secret guarding card, although Lucy's illustrations are very different and we can really see how uh, she has been influenced by the Incan cultures that she's been um, living near. I hope I'm remember I hope I'm remembering that correctly. Incan. I'm reading to see if it says which which part of the world Lucy has been drawing in Peruvian Andes. Peruvian Andes. Um and so the nines of pentacles for the fours, um, this is a card of congratulations. You have done the work and built the garden from nothing, whether that is a literal garden or home, work, family. Pentacles are grounded in the body, of the body, your body, the body of the earth. And they also, like I said earlier, nines have walls around them. And all of those walls always have a door. And so you may always leave to go and see what's on the other side. You may always go back to your sanctuary. 
you may always invite people into your sanctuary who will benefit from the beautiful healing spaces that you've created. And if there are people inside your sanctuary who are toxic and not working to be better in a way that is respectful of your space, you may absolutely show them the door. I find it interesting as well that for those watching and listening today that we already have two nines. And so for the group, there's almost a, a question of what walls do we have around us and why? For the fives, the six of pentacles. This is a card of childlike wonder, of taking delight in the small things. Hello, Megan. Yes, you found us. Thank you. I, I do apologize. Mercury retrograde and me not realizing that it takes 24 hours to verify a new YouTube channel for going live. Word to the wise, takes 24 hours. Please do learn from my mistake. Megan, we are, <laughs> no, right? Um, we are, uh, I invite you to choose a car, a number between five and 13 and the wisdom and the lessons of that card are for you. And then any other lessons that you hear that resonate, great. They are also for you. We are with the fives right now who get the six of pentacles. I love the heart plant that is growing in between the two children. It is such a beautiful representation of gratitude practice and taking time to smell the roses and to give little gifts that are full of meaning and intent and here I am. here I am touching my um, my glass hearts necklace because they <laughs> they're almost the same size. That's sort of delightful. Um, give your gifts freely and in a way that is sustainable. That is that is renewing and rejuvenating and also in some ways mythic because the cent one of the other central characters in this particular illustration which is definitely different than um other decks is very sort of you know santa claus father christmas e uh walking walking through the sky with four pentacles in a sack on their back and the two two on the bottom it's almost as if the the pentacles that they have in their hands they're offering they're offering up as gifts and um And so also in some ways, um, what's coming up is remembering that stories are also gifts. For the sixes, the hierophant, ooh, yes. The hierophant, hone your message. Hone your message. Listen to spirit. 
let spirit be deeply connected to the earth and to you. This, this hierophant has a very deep flow to it with their, with divine energy coming in and through, through the earth, it all being connected by this braid around and I really appreciate that this particular illustration of the hierophant doesn't have the doesn't have one of the tradition more traditional like church e Roman Catholic structures with the two kneeling parishioners and the religious figure on the pulpit. I um, I really appreciate that this hierophant is centered in their own wisdom, in their own divine, in their own divinity, and that it is completely connected to the earth. One way of looking at this image is a disembodied head. And another way of looking at this image is that the body of the hierophant, of this hierophant, is the earth. And that all of and that all of the, the the messages and wisdoms that that grow and that sprout and are shared very much blossom from the earth. And so for, for my sixes, especially if you're feeling, if you're not feeling connected or you're, or like not feeling connected to the earth, not feeling connected to your body, how this, this area is very much asking the question, can you can you get out into the world more? Can flowers and fruits be more a part of your life to bring to bring your your ideas and things that might be coming to you from the ethereal and and spirit realms to the earth? grounding it down through your body into the actual earth what can you what can you do to bring those messages back to the body sevens blue this one is for you the five of pentacles now this is a very different Five of Pentacles. This Five of Pentacles, rather than the Rider Waite Smith illustration of being out in the cold and really worried about money and resources, in this Five of Pentacles, we have darkness, we have the night, we have the owl and the tree and another six pointed and multiple six pointed stars and the moon. And so there is this, and rain, there's a rain cloud and almost a, almost a, a druid looking individual going to a stone cairn. And so there, this card, this five of pentacles invites you to be sitting into the night. Appropriate, given the time of day that this is happening, especially if you are still in the central time zone. Um, finding ways to be 
be comfortable with the night and also straight up planning for that rainy day. Like it's always, it's always good to have a plan for the rainy day, whatever, whatever and however that is for you. Plan for the rainy day and find the ways to enjoy the night. Learn from her wisdoms. Listen to the animals that are of the night. I hope that helps Blue and all of the other sevens. Eights. Mmm. Eights, y'all get the queen of swords. Get ready to cut away what is not needed to clear the toxic and the harmful to be in alignment and swir like the fact that there are all of these tendrils of energy and weaves just coming towards her and the crown around her head is also a braid that's just radiating out cutting cutting through cutting through things like what <laughs> these these sort of like worm <laughs> what i'm what i'm seeing coming coming out of or being drawn into the sword because for for those of you with magical practices you'll know that the athame and the sword when you are casting a circle you are sending your energy out and then when you are closing the circle you're drawing that energy back into the sword and so it feels like this queen is drawing energy into that sword and clearing it out of the space because at least for me these weird worm people that kind of look like they've swallowed a person slash electricity that are like kicking out of the little wormy mouth. Yeah, it's very snake-like, Dana. Um, like, that all feels like icky toxic energy that wants to be cleared and cleaned from the space. And the Queen of Swords is doing that with tools that are going to keep her safe and keep her energy field clear. She's not taking that into herself. She's not taking on other people's shit. She is using the proper tool and then will cleanse and consecrate it to handle that energy afterwards. And so my Queens of Swords... This queen, this queen of swords is very much inviting you to use your tools well, suffer no fools, and yeah, we're for for those of us in the northern hemisphere, we're coming up on winter. It's time to clear away lots of dead brush and clean things and clean things up. And that can be done in a very literal as well as metaphorical way. Nines. David, I hope that eight helped you.
for the nines, emperor. The emperor is all about systems, systems of power, systems of, of resource sharing. And this is a very, oh, I'm glad, David. This is a, this feels to be a much more spiritual emperor than they are traditionally for me, at least in the decks that I am, um, that I predominantly read with. This has tones of Egypt with the, um, with the eye and the the chin piece and those are those are not systems that i am terribly familiar with except in a very you know general passing way however the emperor is very much about form and creating the systems and creating the practices and creating the boundaries and the infrastructure to get resources out to the people, to share the bounty from and with the empress. And it is a place of divine masculine. Oh, and I don't think I said this earlier, but even when using gendered language, masculine, feminine, queens, emperors, they reside in all bodies. And there's something very much like I keep my eye keeps coming back to the mushroom on the emperor's head. And so there's like part for whatever reason, part of the story that's that's coming up is to not necessarily take yourself too seriously. Like even when you do have even when you do and you are in places of power and bounty and hiring, firing, these are bosses and CEOs and all of like all of those things. <laughs> it is. It's sort of like a garden gnome. And so there's also this there's I'm also receiving this feeling of not to take yourself too seriously that even with a lot of power to stay away from my way is the only way because there are always there are always other options and and other energy and information coming in David I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad number 10s Number 10s, y'all get the page of pentacles, learning your earth, students of the earth, of your bodies, of snakes, of healing, of plants, of vegetables, of, of, re, of, so the pages, they have they have already done the cycle one through ten of pentacles. So there's all of that to learn and gather and and seed collect for healing for for the future. And so this the pages of pentacles are are students of earth, learning your bodies, learning the earth around you, feeling into 
how you are different from place to place to place, listening to the practical practices, that's sort of redundant phrase, um, learning, learning and listening to the practices that really heal you, the foods to eat that are healing for you, that make you feel good, that um, in my in in my case, this reminds me of when I had my hysterectomy afterwards, I was on an anti-inflammatory diet for six months because that made my body feel better. But then after that time, there were things that I wanted to add back in. And like like the hot cocoa that I am drinking right now. So listen to your body, listen to the earth, and be constantly, this card is an invitation to be constantly curious about what is healing for you and what is healing for the earth around you and how can those be woven together. Eleven. Eleven, y'all get the three of pentacles. And the three of pentacles, I love, I love, I love how Lucy has shifted the illustration here. This is frequently. Oh, eleven. Yes. Thank you. What did I say? I don't know what I said, but I obviously said it incorrectly. And thank you for correcting me, Megan. Elevens, elevens, elevens. Y'all get the three of pentacles. And the three in in other, like Pamela Coleman Smith illustrations, there are uh, people working from a blueprint. And so one of the messages that is always a part of the three of pentacles when it comes up for a reading that I'm doing is to make sure that everybody is working from the same blueprint. And in this case, because they're all gardeners and um, I, I feel like this is rice farming, but that also might just be, be because of the hat. Oh, excellent, Megan. 11. Yes. So this card is for you um, and all of the other 11s out there. So make sure that everybody is working from the same blueprint. Make sure that everybody is um, working with the same vision in mind, because when, when you know that everyone is when you know that everyone has the same end goal in mind, then it's a, it's so much easier to let people go off and do their own work and build their part of the community to tend their part of the garden, to build their part of the theater or the workspace and not have to, not have to have any of those um, impulses of micromanagement because you've already all laid the foundation and come to agreement. And so if you are working and building things right now, home, work, family, all of the practical, tactile things are our pentacles, make sure that everybody is on the, on the same plane working with the same blueprint, the same vision, so that then they can really, that then they can really shine. And everybody trusts that they're working for the common good because they all know what that good is. They've all agreed to it. So this also, this card also has a ton of agreements and it also wants to be said that the agreements are not just with the individuals in the card, but also with the land. Because there are, there are 
some crops that don't want to grow in certain types of soil. And so it is incredibly important to listen to all of the life forms that are going to be affected with any of your decisions, especially when it comes to building things, because building things is going to be on land somewhere. And that land also has to be okay with what's being built there. I hope that helps, Megan. For my number 12s, hmm, the High Priestess. Sink into your divine practice, your spiritual practice, whatever that is for yourselves. I have no idea how to translate this card for an atheist. Um, so if anyone has ideas for the future, please share them with me. Listening to two things are really jumping out uh, from this particular high priestess. One is the heart and the other is the moon. And so there is a, as, as you are sinking and diving deeper into the divine feminine, into the reflective qualities of the moon and noticing the kinship between the moon's cycles and your cycles and feeling your heart and and listening and acting and growing from that place of center that place of blood being of similar salinity to the sea um, or maybe it's tears. I might be misremembering that. It might be tears that are the same salinity as, as the as many of the oceans and not blood. Which is also part of the high priestess of listening, listening to those um, listening to that insight and that intuition. And then not being afraid of being wrong and then being corrected and finding out the new and deeper and more correct information because we are all constantly growing and learning and the world around us is constantly growing and evolving and changing. So we must grow and evolve and change with it. Yes, the high priestess is number 12. For, for the number 12s, Dana, the high priestess in terms of it's uh, in terms of her number in the um, trajectory of the major arcana is number two. Zero is the fool, one is the magician, two is the high priestess, three the empress, and four the emperor. Well, Dana, we will get to your 13 here in a moment. But for the 12s, finishing up with the high priestess for today, they're one of the other things that is also jumping out are the radiating circles and of and that there is this beautiful simplicity in just being centered and being you and authentic and 
in some ways without really doing anything, you're still doing something that radiates and affects the world around you. And for those of you for whom it is uh, legal and part of your world, there is a little cannabis there at the bottom, which may be part of your medicine and may be part of your spiritual practice. And it also may not. It may be indicative of or symbolic of other plant magics and plant medicines to listen to as you delve deeper into the High Priestess's mysteries. And Dana, now for the 13s. For y'all, the Page of Wands. Be a student of your fire, of your drive, your passions, your desires. Be curious about when you get angry and when you don't. Be curious about what literally warms you up and and heats your soul and sparks your curiosity and and follow that like the 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 wand is another focusing is another focusing tool and here we can see all of this braided energy coming out from our page's wand. And it's the hand gesture is very is is very much like holding holding up and out as a gift. And so there is there is a feeling in this gesture of what of your energy, your spirit, your ideas, your fire are you are you able to offer to others, to the world around you? And how does that because coming coming from the weave are what look to me anyway to be like three little mushrooms or three little hazelnuts and so that feels very much like the energy that you give and that you share with the world has these has these fruitful outcomes to it So thank you. Um, are those little hearts at the end of the energy? Yeah, they could totally be little hearts also. Upside down, upside down little hearts. But yeah, flip that over and they totally look heart. Like David, yes. Yes, yes. They also kind of um, look like spades. And when... Um, The minor arcana also line up with playing cards. And so pentacles are diamonds. Um, cups are hearts. And um, I can't, I always get confused, honestly, as to whether or not clubs are wands and spades are swords or vice versa but if wands are spades those also look very much like spades 
or acorns. Yes, absolutely. You can totally see acorns there. And there's also something, there's also something about the the feather in the cap and um and the and there's a kinship there with air and and thoughts and ideas and writing things down um which tie into pages being students and constant learners and incredibly curious and um and listening with with all of themselves as well as with their psychic sense and intuition. So thank you all so much for joining my uh, first 13 for 13 on uh, YouTube Live. I'm uh, gonna test out doing doing these on the 13th for the next six months and see how that feels. They will be at Group Tarot's YouTube channel in the future. And you are so welcome, Blue. Thank you. Thank you, Blue. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, David. Did I, did I? Thank you, uh, Dance Naked Creative. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you have, uh, so please like and subscribe. And you can check out grouptarot.com and join my mailing list if you haven't already, although I think everybody here has. Thank you. Um, and until next month, have a beautiful, beautiful night. <laughs>